In this video, we're going to talk about how to burn fat. It's a very important topic, um, but a big problem, simply because pretty much all the mainstream recommendations for burning fat are completely outdated. In fact, uh, look at the statistics. In America, only 2% of the population ever is successfully ex successful at burning fat and achieving their weight loss goals. An average female spends 17 years dieting. So what does that tell you? They're operating off of incorrect information. What I'm going to tell you is based on fact, physiology books, how the body works. There's two main fuel sources in the body. Okay, uh, You have fat and you have stored sugar. There is a third one called muscle, but I'm not going to get into that because you have to be very, very sick for your body to start using muscle protein as a fuel source. We're going to talk about the two main ones, which is fat and sugar. In other words, your body can store sugar, the name of that's called glycogen, in your liver and your muscles, and that can release in between times where you're not eating, okay? Uh, or it can go after the fat. Um, so the way it works are fat burning hormones, based on what you eat and what you do, trigger the fat, and then to release certain enzymes to dissolve that fat, they're called lipase enzymes. They're hormone sensitive uh, fat enzymes that break things down into ketones. Ketones are the byproduct of fat metabolism. And your body can run on these very efficiently, um, way better actually, it's a better fuel source. It's a cleaner fuel source. Your body can run on this, even your brain can run on ketones. Now, Fat making hormones trigger the storage of sugar and the conversion of the sugar into fat. So that's how that works. The great majority of people are only burning sugar, which is glucose. They're not burning fat. What occurs is they will lose some temporary water weight and they hit a plateau, thinking that's actual fat, but it, they never actually burn fat. And I can prove that because I have a machine that measures how much fat someone burns and you can very easily see they lose water weight and then they plateau. So the great majority of people burn sugar, they're not actually burning fat. So in this next section, I'm going to tell you about the single control factor, what determines whether you're burning fat or whether you're burning sugar. So here it is, the number one controller of whether you burn actual fat or whether you're burning sugar, is this one hormone called insulin. So insulin, even in small amounts, has the strength and the domination to prevent you from tapping into your fat reserve. So here's a little uh, graph on sh how much insulin, or let's just say, when I talk about insulin, I'm going to talk about sugar because sugar triggers insulin. So I could easily say the number one control of whether you burn fat is sugar or hidden sugars but I'm just gonna call insulin sugar right now. So um, if that sugar is high, let's say it's high sugar right here, or high insulin, um, you're not gonna be able to burn fat. Your body is running on sugar. So let's say you eat moderately and you have, let's say, half of the amount of sugar. So, so because someone said everything in moderation, you know, it still won't work because insulin has to be zero or sugar has to be zero to tap into ketones, which is the byproduct of fat burning, which is ketosis. So in other words, it's not a graph that's a gradual graph. You have to make insulin, or so we say sugar, zero before you can burn fat. So now what we're going to talk about is this thing called ketosis. Ketosis is what we want to get into. And you may hear some negative things about ketosis because it relates to diabetes, but we're talking about doing ketosis in a very healthy way, okay? Ketosis is the healthiest thing to do uh, for your blood sugars, for your heart, for your brain, and other conditions like polycystic ovarian uh, syndrome. Really, really important because think about that condition, the person is usually always insulin resistant, and if they, put, if, they, if they go on this, they see great improvements, okay? So we want to get the person in ketosis. Um, to get in ketosis uh, usually does not happen overnight. It's easy 
to tap into the sugar reserve, because all you have to do is eat sugar, but to get into ketosis, it can sometimes take way more than two days. It could take a week to two weeks, up to a month, and maybe in some situations, five or even six weeks before you're really hardcore into fat burning. Now, why is that? Because you've been living on sugar your whole life and your system is so inefficient and so used to burning sugar to convert that over. It's called a keto adaptation. So you're adapting to burning fat just takes a little bit longer. Don't worry about it because you can see ketones in your urine within a few days. But the point is you want to stick with it a little longer. And I think what discourages a lot of people is they think they're going to burn fat in a day or two and they get discouraged and they stop. When in fact, to adapt your body into fat burning, it could take up to a month to possibly six weeks in very extreme cases. I'm telling you that because it might happen in a week uh, or maybe a little longer than a week. But just hang in there and stick with it because it will happen and your body will be burning fat and a lot of problems will actually go away. So now let's talk about what foods that you have to eat to get into ketosis. Okay, so here's, here's what you need to eat. Number one, you want to keep your carbohydrates within 5 to 10% of the entire amount of calories that you eat in a given day. Now, the type of carbohydrates we're going to recommend are vegetable in nature. Um, so why vegetable? Even though they have a small amount of carbohydrate, they have a lot of vitamins and minerals that you're not going to get with protein or fat. So we do want the vegetable carbohydrates here in a good amount, okay? But the net sugars from that is going to be very, very, very low, if, if anything at all, okay? 25% uh, of your diet should come in the form of protein. Uh, this thing that I'm telling you is not the Atkins diet. Atkins is a lot of protein. Um, our body is not made out of carbohydrate. Some of our body is protein but a lot of our body is made out of fat, and that's the third one right here. 65 to 80% of your calories should be in the form of fat. Now, before you freak out, uh, realize that um, I am actually have been in ketosis for uh, quite a while, and I have a lot of clients that also have been in ketosis, and it's a very healthy thing to do because you feel so good. Um, but fat, is go it's gonna be in the form of healthy fats. And um, it's not going to be obviously deep fried, you know, anything. So we want the carbohydrates, vegetable. We want the protein. So that would kind of come out to about, I'd say about four to five, maybe six ounces of protein with each meal. Okay. But see, most protein comes with fat. So a lot of your protein source actually comes from fat as well. Um, but you do not want to consume the lean proteins. And that is because... Um, you, you need that fat to get your body into ketosis. Um, Eskimos consume blubber and they actually are in a state of ketosis and they can actually, um, a lot of them actually have zero heart problems at all. And if you're concerned about increasing your cholesterol, realize this, your body makes 2,000 milligrams of cholesterol every single day. Why would your body make that much cholesterol um, if it didn't need it? So when you consume more cholesterol or fat, your body just makes less. That's how it works. You need this cholesterol to build um, the surrounding around on your cells. You need this raw material to build up your hormones, especially stress hormones. You need it for the lens of the eye and even the brain. Uh, a lot of cholesterol is in our brain to help the nerve connectivity. So, your body adapts to that. So we need a lot of it. I mean, like one egg would be 300 milligrams. So you have to have like 40 eggs to equal what your body makes every single day. But it adapts. So you eat less, your body makes more. You eat more, the body makes um, less. So now, 65 to 80% of your body should be in the form of fat. So um, that is the formula to get someone in fat burning. Um, one time in high school, I, tried to, I, to, I was a wrestler and I tried to gain weight. And so what I did is I decided, well, of course, if I want to gain weight, I have to eat fatty foods. I started losing weight the more fat that I ate. And that kind of confused me until later when I uh, got into the physiology of it. And I found out that consuming fat 
is neutral with insulin. Eating fat does not trigger insulin. Insulin is the key thing that must be zero because once you get your body into fat burning by doing this, all it's going to take is a little bit of sugar to totally throw you out of ketosis once your body is adapt to it. But you'll feel much better with your energy, uh, with your uh, cardiovascular, with your endurance. Uh, and if you add exercise on top of this, oh my gosh, it's going to be huge. A lot of professional athletes are going into this as well because they have a lot better performance. And um, a lot of credible medical doctors are even recommending this as well. So it's a, it's a new thing and you know it's true because it's the exact opposite of what mainstream is telling you to do. They're saying have 60% of your diet carbohydrates and have only 5 to 10% fat and protein the same. So you know it's correct. So if you just did the opposite of what everyone tells you to do, you'll come out ahead. Now, if you want to know the specifics of what exact types of fats that you should have and what combinations and some ideas of maybe some snacks, uh, click the link below and you can download uh, a page of what to eat and how to do this correctly. All right, so I hope you enjoy this and I will see you in the next video.